Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to CIBC Presents Entrepreneurship 101. Mars's mission is to help grow the next generation of companies that will really be the foundation of our knowledge economy. And our focus is on creating relevant, real-time, contextual, experience-based learning opportunities for entrepreneurs that are in the process of building those companies. If you got that drive, and you have the passion, and you have the go-to attitude, guess what? Now you just have to go out there and do it. And by the end of this course, we're very confident in the fact you'll be able to go out there and execute on your plan. Entrepreneurship 101 is really designed to serve the people that are thinking about starting a business. Um, this could be someone in graduate school, an undergraduate engineer, scientist, all the way through to people that are maybe been working in industry for 10, 15 years who all of a sudden think, you know what, now might be the right time to start a business. It's a 26 week program, one day a week for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. It's a free program and again it's designed to really meet the needs of people thinking about starting a business. Entrepreneurship 101 for me has just been you know, learning all the business side of things, seeing everything from, from A to Z, kind of filling in holes in my knowledge that I didn't have before. The grassroots education, the Entrepreneurship 101, would cover a whole suite of different topics, but it's really designed for that level of person. I'm thinking about starting a business, what do I need to think about? It gives you a skill set of writing a business plan, pitching to investors, anticipating what they're looking for, like some of the lectures about VCs, what they're looking for. When you have a series of experienced VCs on the stage painting reality as to how difficult it really is to get capital, it really forces the entrepreneurs and the would-be entrepreneurs in the audience to really think through, okay, what are the elements that I'm going to need to get lined up to really have a strong business case to go to the uh, capital communities to raise money? They've done a fantastic job in bringing in some really big name speakers that are really inspiring. Harry Rosen, uh, Michael McCain. One of the other advantages is the opportunity for the entrepreneurs to network, not only with the lecturers and panelists that might be presenting, but also with other would-be entrepreneurs to share insights and experiences about what are you thinking and what are some of the challenges that you have. So Entrepreneurship 101 is really that, uh, that foundational layer that we wanted to build that would not only connect the community into the resources of Mars, but would begin to, to lay the groundwork for a long-term robust entrepreneurship uh, community in in Ontario. You do those things, you're going to be successful in any market. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to CIBC Presents Entrepreneurship 101. Um, my name is Tony Redpath. I'm the Vice President of Partner Programs here at Mars. Uh, it's been my privilege to uh, coordinate and present this course for the last five years. Um, this year, I'm delighted to say I am joined by a colleague of mine, Carrie Damon, who is the Director of Entrepreneurship Education here at Mars, and together the two of us will be uh, coordinating and presenting the course. Um, I say I'm truly delighted because the truth be told, Carrie is doing all the work and I just get to stand up here at the front. So uh, I really like this situation. Um, if I can move ahead to the first. Uh, so, okay, so that's where you are, Mars. You already know that. Um, the agenda. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the first item there about Mars. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, turn the podium over to Carrie, who will really talk to you about entrepreneurship uh, 101, our philosophy, the structure of the course, and uh, uh, the, uh, the real nitty gritty. Um, I will start off by saying uh, a little bit about E101. Um, it's not a mini MBA. It is intended to be a series of 30 very practical lectures that will help you learn the basics uh, that you need to know to launch a high-tech business or a social focus uh, innovative business. Um, it is very much practical. It is um, very much experiential. We want to share the experience of many uh, people with you so that you can learn from them. 
The other thing, though, is that uh, Entrepreneurship 101 is part of a much larger suite of activities here at Mars. And that's what I want to start off and just spend a few minutes uh, talking to you about so you get a sense of the resources and the backup that you've got here at Mars. So, um, okay, uh, what does Mars do? Uh, aside from orbit the sun and provide NASA engineers with a great target to send really cool rovers to, um, this Mars connects science, business, and capital. Uh, that's our focus, all of the necessary ingredients to really help uh, high tech, and our focus is strictly high tech and, uh, and, and social innovation, um, to get better success in growing companies. Uh, we have a building, a community, um, and we anchor that community and try to put it to work on behalf of innovative uh, ventures. And as we say, we're focused on building the next generation of great Canadian companies. Um, resources, I'll just touch on this briefly. The sorts of things that we do, our core, one of our core activities is advisory services. We have a team of advisors. Um, I guess I can't, keep, I can't keep up with them all. There's over 70 advisors with expertise in a wide range of technologies and, and ventures. These are advisors not chosen um, um, because they're fresh out of MBA school. These are all folks who have started companies, grown them, and successfully exited. These are folks who have had C-level positions in major multinational corporations. The theme here, they have lived it, they've done it, um, and their job is to help coach you and mentor you so that you can do it. Um, we have an incubator. Um, that's the good news. The bad news is it's normally full. Uh, but we do look for up-and-coming companies and we try to squeeze as many as we can into Mars so that they're really here and uh, can get uh, full access very easily to all the services we offer. We provide market intelligence. If you want a market study, commercially available market study, through our advisors, we can get that to you for free, as long as you're a pre-revenue company, basically. Education, I'll come back a little bit more to this, but a variety of events. Networks, we have all sorts of events where you can meet other entrepreneurs, you can meet um, seasoned um, business folks and learn from them. We even have uh, an investment fund that we manage uh, that can invest up to half a million dollars in equity investment into, into new ventures. I'm not going to go into all the details. I just want you to appreciate that there is a community, a service community, if you will, here at Mars that is available to you um, to help you launch an idea, a company, and get to the marketplace. Um, now, uh, just the advisory services, we're broken down uh, some typical sectors, health, ICT, it's now ICE, um, actually for um, entertainment, digital media, uh, clean tech, social entrepreneurship, and if you can read the fine print there, a variety of areas, intellectual property, partnerships, human resources, that our advisors will help, are available to help you with. Um, and there you have Mars Advisory Services, entrepreneurs and residents and, and volunteers. So, education, you're here for that red box. CIBC presents Entrepreneurship 101. Again, that is one component of a fairly comprehensive suite of education programs. So, as Carrie is going to uh, talk to you about, uh, we have a weekly email that will go out to everybody who's registered for the course. And if there's a lecture coming up, say, in our best practices series, 
that we think you might be interested in, we'll give you a heads up and we'll let you know. So that's the broader context. And I'm now gonna turn this over to Kerry uh, to really focus in now on what you're really here for, which is Entrepreneurship 101. Over to you. I don't know how to make, oh, there we go. So I just want to talk a little bit, um, sorry, I'm Carrie Damon. I am the Director of Entrepreneurship Education here at Mars, and I'm very excited to have you all here at our first event for Entrepreneurship 101. As Tony said, this is um, going into the sixth year, and we're growing and we're adding lots of resources and uh, ever-changing um, curriculum, and it's been wonderful, and uh, it's a, truly a great program. So I want to talk a little bit about an entre uh, what is entrepreneurship and uh, what is an entrepreneur. Just, just a sort of an audience check. Who here is um, considering starting a business? Please raise your hand. Okay, who has already started a business? Okay. Um, who in, for the ones that have started a business, um, who is selling something already? So I think we have the right mix here, where it, um, Entrepreneurship 101 is really for those people that are, have an idea or are just starting out and want to get kind of dipped into to different topics. So an entrepreneur is one who undertakes. And I mean, it's that broad. You can, you can do entrepreneurship in any field, and, uh, and it really is about building something from nothing. So it's a very courageous um, person to be. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the distinction that a, a social entrepreneur from regular entrepreneurs a bit next week with Alison Hewitt, who is actually um, the head of our social innovation group here, SIG, at Mars, who heads up the social innovation activities at Mars. And um, she would know it better than me, but a social entrepreneur is very much like a business entrepreneur, except in addition to having a profit, they also want to have an impact. So, um, and their structure might be different. They might be a nonprofit. Um, have a different structure like a nonprofit, but they they are a business person, but they also have sort of a triple bottom line um, hope for their business. So when we talk about entrepreneurs, a lots of people are trying to figure out okay what makes entrepreneurs different? Um, can we you know basically bottle what is in an entrepreneur's head and and make it available to everyone? Because with sort of society becoming ever more um, all the economy changing, we want to create more entrepreneurs for more jobs and um, to improve our economy. So this was an interesting article that sort of looked at a lot of different research studies of entrepreneurs and said, okay, these are maybe the five things that we really think that entrepreneurs have above and beyond regular people. One is the opportunity recognizing mind. So they have this ability to kind of look out and, and grasp at um, or see opportunities that they can uh, monetize. So they're, they're really opportunistic, which is a, a positive trait. Um, and, and that might mean that they, they're continually finding opportunities. Even at, with one venture, they're always finding the next opportunity for that venture. The second trait was a designing mind. So in, in sort of different from a traditional business person who might have a functional focus, finance, marketing, something like that, an entrepreneur um, integrates a lot of different elements. They really design a business. They, they design the team the product, the service, the business. So it, it's really a very creative mind that they have. Um, they have a risk managing mind. And we might think, well, entrepreneurs are risk takers. But actually, they're very skilled risk managers. So they take risks. They operate in, in fields of ambiguity. But they have this ability to strategically take the right risks and know how to see what risks are coming in advance. Um, resilient mind, I think that one's probably um, self-explanatory because obviously they have to deal with failure. They have to be resilient in the face of difficulty. Um, and, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs are serial entrepreneurs. They've, they've, um, they've had failures and they've continued and they've learned from those failures. And the last one's a bit hard to explain in just like 10 seconds, but um, the effectuating mind has to do with that they're very action-oriented. So they may not write a, you know, a solid plan and then follow that plan. They're sort of learning from the environment. So an entrepreneur might write a business plan, and then they go out and do that, and they're constantly revising their business plan based on 
what the environment is telling them, what their customers are telling them, what their vendors are telling them. So they've got this sort of action orientation where it's kind of like the course correct business model. You try something, oh, it works better like this, you change to the, that course, and you're sort of course correcting all the way. But the good news is, um, Peter Drucker is a, a management guru that I'm sure uh, many people who have some experience reading management books um, know of. And he said that entrepreneurship can be learned. He thought of it very much um, as a, a discipline that can be learned. And this is one of my favorite quotes. He said, most of what you hear about entrepreneurship is all wrong. It's not magic. It's not mysterious. And it has nothing to do with genes. It's a discipline. And like any discipline, it can be learned. So that's why we're here. So we're trying to um, provide the tools to help entrepreneurs and those thinking about entrepreneurship. So we know that there's lots of people with great drive and great ideas out there, and Mars is trying to really facilitate the, um, their, uh, the development of their businesses and ideas. So we can't create entrepreneurs, that desire has to come from you, but we're hoping that we can help you with some tools. Okay, and a little bit about the course. Um, so the video explained a little bit. The course started out very much as a course for um, the university community. It was aimed at science and engineering, technicians, um, medical researchers, building technology companies. Um, and so a lot of the people in the audience will be from around this area, the Discovery District. Last year, um, with the growth of the social innovation practice at Mars, um, we added social entrepreneurship, which is a very important addition. And often social entrepreneurs, other than adding the impact, are very similar. They have technology, um, but they they're just uh, have a little bit of a tweaking of the business model to add the impact. But we're, we're also making the content so that it'll help you even if you don't fall into those categories. We talk about things like project management, marketing, sales, product development. Um, these will all be skills that if you, uh, even if you want to start a, have a franchise or start a retail business or something that doesn't fall into the typical Mars boxes, um, we think that this course can provide value for you as well. So um, <clears throat> we're hoping that you have a business idea in mind, even if it's a crazy one right now. As you go through the course, if you think about each lecture and how that would affect your idea, I think it helps to put... Um, what you're hearing and learning into context and make you, it's almost like brainstorming. It's, it's, a, it's a brainstorming um, experience to uh, have something that you're, you're applying it to something that's relevant to you. So a little bit about the uh, course itself. Um, it's weekly from now till the end of April. There's 30 sessions. Um, we have two special series uh, within the, the Entrepreneurship 101 course. One is called Lived It Lectures, and you saw in the video last year we had Harry Rosen, who was fantastic, and you can watch his video um, online, and um, Michael McCain. And those lectures are meant to feature, you know, celebrated entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs who um, have lived it. And they're meant to ins inspire and really encourage you to keep striving towards your goal. We are adding a new um, session this year called Meet the Entrepreneurs. And these are going to be sector specific, so they'll be in the Mars boxes of clean tech, life sciences or health, um, ICE, which is ICT plus entertainment, digital, and social innovation. And these are based upon um, participants from the, the last years. They said, you know, we really want a place where we can meet each other. We want to hear from not just the big guys who have already done it, we want to hear from, you know, successful startup entrepreneurs. So what Meet the Entrepreneurs will do is have a panel session of sort of up, um, startup entrepreneurs talking about their challenges. We'll try to get them representing different areas so that it's relevant. And um, we'll have a networking um, opportunity outside um, with uh, some snacks and drinks and stuff. And encourage uh, other people involved in the Mars community, including our clients and people around here, to come and meet entrepreneurs um, in their sector. And then there, there is one final thing to the course, which is the Upstart competition which is um, a competition that we have in May, and I'll talk about that um, in the next couple slides. So we're gonna do a quick run through. There was a calendar outside um, that's just a one-page calendar. It may change. We haven't have all the speakers um, confirmed yet, so there might be some shifting around, so you can check online for the latest schedule. We basically have the lecture topic areas in five boxes, strategy, marketing, product, finance, and HR. And I'll quickly run through some of those. So the strategy topics, um, the first one is actually next week with Allison and Tony, and it's different types of entrepreneurship. So they're going to talk about um, 
for-profit, non-for-profit, um, looking at different models of financing, how are you going to get your funding, are you going to bootstrap, or different things like that, and sort of what are the legal implications of those um, decisions. Um, basic nuts and bolts of building a business that has to do with um, incorporating, registering, all the sorts of small legal things to um, create your business. Business communication tools, it doesn't sound like a sexy title. Um, we need a sexier title, but it's a really important lecture. It's on um, elevator pitch, business plan for, for those in science, writing white papers, and all the sort of um, doing presentations, all the sort of business communication tools that you'll need um, as an entrepreneur to sell your business. Marketing topics. This is a big change from last year. Um, we have um, expanded marketing significantly um, because we find that people are really smart and create really great things, but the challenge with sort of Canadians in general is that we're not that great at selling them. So we need to really get um, to hone up on the marketing and sales. So intro to marketing, just the basics, um, sort of a framework for what's in a marketing plan. Market analysis, um, how to define your target market, um, look at your market, to decide who that is and how you'll reach them. Value proposition, really important lecture. Um, how to, in a very simple way, communicate what you're doing. It could be a really um, difficult technology, um, but communicate it in a way that it makes sense to your customer or your client. Marketing communications, everything is, covers everything from websites to a um, little bit of public relations, PR releases, and um, different communications like that. Sales, self-explanatory, a little bit about what it's like to sell. Um, what are some of the difficulties, especially for technology companies? Because you're, you might be selling something that has never been sold before, so that presents its own challenges. Um, distribution, sort of choosing your channels and how to manage your channels. And go-to-market strategy, which is really important. So that has to deal with like launching, your launch plan. How you have a product, now how do you get it to market? Sort of linking up. Product topics, huge, really important product development. You might have a, a prototype that you have to make into a product. So what does that process look like? Um, it's actually one of my favorite lectures. It's a really good one. And IP management, also a really important one for technology companies. We'll look at pros and cons of things like copyrights, patents. Um, Trademarks, things like that. And probably your, the one you've been waiting for that I saved for last, or second last, is uh, finance. So money. So where do you get the money from? Um, well, how, what is, how do you create money? So the first one is building a business model. You know, what are your costs and, and how are you creating a profit? Financial planning, so that has to do with everything that's in your, um, how you manage your money inside your company, budgeting, um, cash flow statements, things like that. A new lecture this year, uh, bootstrapping. So with the sort of decline of the VC community, the venture capital community is um, sort of shrinking. So we're, we added bootstrapping because it's a way, especially for um, ICT or ICE companies, to um, create their businesses. Um, so bootstrapping, for those who don't know, is when you take, um, you might sell a service or sell your product and you use the proceeds to sort of self-fund yourself. So you don't go to an angel investor, you don't go to a venture capitalist, you're self-funding. Um, Raising money, this is a really, that was on the video with the panel of the three VCs. This is a really great lecture because they, um, they really, every year, give it to the people straight about exactly what they're looking for. And it's, it's incomparable to hear a VC tell you what they're looking for and how to approach them the wrong way and how to approach them the right way. So it's a really great lecture. In terms of investments, um, it doesn't sound very sexy, but it's a really important lecture. So if you're going for venture capital money, what, what are they, when you sign a term sheet or the legal agreement that they give you, what, is that, what does that mean? What are all these terms and what are they looking for? It's really important for entrepreneurs to, to know um, how, how, what VC's motivation is and how they're, they're sort of expressing that through their legal agreement. And the last one is the pitch. And this is, you know, how to make a fantastic presentation, a really pack a powerful punch. And the last sort of grouping of topics for Entrepreneurship 101 is people. So of course, um, how many people here are just sole, sole entrepreneurs right now? Does anybody have an employee? Okay, a couple. A couple. So um, this, is, this is actually something that I find people don't, um, they might undervalue sort of the value of HR. And HR is truly important. Like when you have a technology, you developed it, and your first person you hire is a salesperson, you better have a salesperson that sells. 
It's such an important topic. So governance is, is the first one, and it's about sort of board, board of directors, um, advisory board, when do you use them, how can they help you, what's their role, when do you need to get them, and then recruiting, which is when you want to start building your team. So I, I talked a bit about the Lived It lectures. So um, some of the ones that you can find online on the MarsDD.com website, Harry Rosen, he did a really good um, job last year of sales, a really dynamic speech about sales and how he sort of made his, his um, differentiated himself and made a niche. Michael McCain did a, a great speech on sort of balancing um, sort of being entrepreneurial with being a business person. So, so you know, following structure and sort of what you have in a big company but, but still adding innovation to that. And we had Bob Deleuze from Porter Airlines. Um, he's been working in, uh, in aviation for I think it was like 50 years. It was, it was really long. It was like 40 years and just had this idea and created this airline. So that was interesting as well. Um, this year we have one so far. Uh, in two weeks time we have Mike McDermott from FreshBooks. Um, he's a really interesting speaker. You'll really enjoy him. He um, started, he had a design firm and he found that he had a problem doing invoicing and he, he was really annoyed so there was no sort of solution out there that helped him for a small business. So he built one, FreshBooks. It's an accounting and invoicing software. It's actually targeted at small businesses and he has built it from himself to 40 people. So he's a really great entrepreneur that talks about how he bootstrapped, how he built a company in a couple years from from 1 to 40, and FreshBooks is in Waterloo. And we will announce very soon um, the Lived It lectures for social innovation, life sciences, and clean tech. And they promise to be good ones. And then just a little thing about Meet the Entrepreneur. So I mentioned it's a new series. It's, it's meant for um, to provide an opportunity or, um, for you guys to, to meet each other and to meet startup other startup entrepreneurs in the sector because they know best what you're going through. So it's, it's really meant to have you um, have the chance to form connections. The first one is for um, ICE, so um, information technology, um, digital media, um, anything to do with entertainment, that kind of stuff. Um, we encourage everybody here to come. It can't hurt. There are going to be a panel session of talking to startup entrepreneurs. So a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the sectors cross over. So you might, you might be a health IT company. So you're kind of a life sciences, you're kind of ICE, you might be a social innovation, um, but you have uh, something online. So there, there's a lot of crossover and I think you can learn from the experiences of entrepreneurs in each sector. So again, those will be panel events with startup entrepreneurs and followed by networking. So I wanted to um, also play a, a video that we, we do a video series called Meet the Entrepreneurs as well and it's about to telling the stories of entrepreneurs in Ontario. There's some really fantastic things happening. So we're gonna play a five minute video about a company called Morgan Solar. And it's a really neat um, story. So we'll just get that queued up. The hardest thing I could possibly do was try to actually find a way to make solar energy cheaper. Um, and, and that's an incredibly arrogant thing to think that you could do that. I can do something that no one else has achieved yet. I was working for Doctors at Borders and I was living in the Congo and I didn't want to come straight back to Canada. I was a little bit sort of uh, in between. The whole time I was looking at going back to Africa. And then my, my dad, he pointed out to me that going back to Africa was something that I couldn't fail at doing. And he said, you have to think of what the hardest thing that you could possibly do at this time and the most valuable thing that you could possibly do and do that. The only thing that I could do that would actually be as worthwhile as that uh, would be if I could make solar power uh, inexpensive enough for everyone, including uh, my friends in Africa, uh, uh, to afford. While I had been living there, I had observed painfully how much lack of access to electricity led directly to almost enslavement. You come to realize that uh, what we take for granted, this access to sort of easy power and energy, it is just so liberating. You know, it's a human right. And so it was kind of this decision to try to take on the biggest challenge I could imagine, coupled with a sort of fearlessness. So this wasn't a situation where I came in, I'd invented something and I was trying to find a way to fit it into a, I was looking for a market for something that I invented. It wasn't that situation at all. I looked at the industry 
and I looked at the way different technologies worked and how much they cost and, and what drove their costs and, and where the materials came from, what mines in the world they came from. And then I also looked at what machines do they use for production? And I said, right, okay, I need to find a way to develop a solar technology, any solar technology, that will use only commodity materials. They'll only use materials that are really widely available. So that when I start getting to gigawatts and gigawatts, which is what I was thinking at that time, my use of that material doesn't start to push the price up. So I said, right, I'm gonna limit myself to only being able to use uh, machines and processes that are commodity machines and processes, as well as the materials. And so I fixated on the kinds of processes that are used in automotive. The technical challenge was to figure out how to constrain the problem correctly so that whatever it is that we did develop and invent would be something we could then uh, scale and bring to market and uh, answer the cost problem, which is the fundamental problem. Uh, we figured out a way to build you know, sheets of material, so very, very thin sheets of, of plastic. All the light that strikes that sheet gets trapped inside the sheet and conducted in to, to a single point at the center where it is then converted into electricity by one of these compound semiconductor cells. By virtue of the fact that we're conducting the light in the form of light and not converting it to electricity over a large area, we become a lot more defect resistant. Uh, we're able to use the most high, highly efficient cell designs in the world. And we use one one thousandth the area. So we end up spending uh, four times less for the semiconductor than you would if you were trying to build a silicon solar panel. The remainder of our materials are actually not that much more expensive than the remainder of the materials on a silicon solar panel. Yeah, they're good problems to have, having to uh, bring, try to bring a disruptive technology into a market. You have to convince yourself that it actually is going to work. All the computer models in the world don't prepare you for reality. Um, and the truth is our first prototype didn't work. And neither did our second or our third. Uh, it took us a while to kind of figure out that it was working and that we weren't all crazy. And then you have to convince, you know, your venture capitalists. And we raised money during the worst year to raise money. I'm going to say in the history of humanity. We'd go to VCs and they're like, you know what, it's a new world out there and you got a new technology, it's unproven, and therefore your company is basically worthless. We'll give you like 20 bucks for the whole thing. Like people were making ridiculously low offers. And we just had to suck it up and uh, I'd say no. As far as banks and customers go, you just have to be prepared to prove it, and to prove it again and again and again, and to be wide open. There can be no secret sauce. You just have to be obvious with what you're doing. Uh, you have to be honest about mistakes. We sent a prototype down to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Colorado uh, way back when, a really early prototype, and the thing caught fire. So there was, we used something in there that was not rated to go up to the temperature that it went to, and boom, and it, you know, it was a learning experience, and, and we laugh about that. In order to get to the point where banks will loan money to our customers to buy our pounds, which is the only way solar farms get built. People don't build these things out of pocket. They use bank financing. That requires a series of very carefully uh, planned and executed tests and demonstrations and validations by third parties that we're carrying out right now. And it's, it's a long-term plan that requires just a lot of organization, a lot of patience, and a lot of hard work. So that's the story of Morgan Solar, which is a, it's a really great story. Okay, a little bit about um, course certificates. So in the past, we've had people ask, um, you know, I'd like to get something from um, Mars that I attended, Entrepreneurship 101. It's a non-credit course. Obviously, it's a free course. Um, but we do have, um, we do make certificates of participation um, for the people who kind of want something that, you know, they can put on their resume or... Um, or have sort of as a reminder. So we're, we're, we will offer these certificates to people who attend 20 of the 30 events. So when you sign up outside, when you see those sheets, if you're interested in having one of these um, course certificates, then you sign the sheet. So everybody probably signed it today because they, they didn't know, which is great. Um, but you don't have to sign that every week if you're not interested in getting this certificate. That's um, really a record of your attendance um, in the session. So. And um, a very exciting component of Entrepreneurship 101 is the Upstart competition, which is getting uh, more and more competitive every year. Um, it is a business plan or a business pitch competition for the participants of Entrepreneurship 101. So it is open to all of you. Um, in, but we do have certain sectors. It's clean tech, life sciences, 
um, social innovation, and ICE. Um, we select in February 10 um, companies, so the one person from each company will be selected to give a 10 minute, minute presentation to a panel of VCs. Um, I guess I've sort of gotten ahead of myself. So you apply for the competition in early February with a three page um, document, sort of a, a business overview. We select 10 participants for the competition. Those 10 um, can work with a Mars advisor for a couple months to sort of hone their pitch. They pitch in May. And uh, one winner is selected to win $10,000. Um, we also have some honorable mentions because it, there's some great companies. And uh, we're going to add something really unique this year because we really want to encourage um, you to attend this as well, not just the people that are in the competition. So we're gonna have a people's choice winner as well because um, sometimes what the VCs like and what the people like, it might be different and we want to reward entrepreneurs with great ideas. So a little bit about the competition eligibility. I mentioned some of this stuff. Um, you have to be registered in Entrepreneurship 101. You have to attend in person um, about 20 lectures, which is the same as you would need for the course um, certificate. It can be an idea that you wish to implement. It can be quite early, but, um, but some of the, the businesses you will be competing against might be a bit later stage. So if it is an idea, it's a very well thought out idea. Um, and then we had to, um, We've added some sort of uh, rules about sort of the size of the company because we were getting companies a little farther along. Um, we want the entrants to have received no more than $100,000 in an investment since their inception and no more than $100,000 in um, revenue since their inception. So just sort of some parameters. Um, and as I said, eligible businesses fall into the four categories, IC, clean tech, social ventures, or life sciences. Um, there's a website if you want to read uh, a, a lot uh, more on the Upstart competition. This is so slow. Oh, okay. Some of the past winners, the last three years we've had some, some really amazing winners. So the winner of um, our most recent one is Shape Collage. He was actually on the intro video. He made, um, I think he was a University of Toronto student and just um, wanted to make a photo collage and was really annoyed that it was really hard to do with, you know, put all your digital pictures into kind of together. He made it himself, and I, I'm not sure the downloads he's got now, but it's, it's a lot. It's like millions, and so he's doing really, really, really well. It's really cool, actually. If you want to make a collage with your pictures, check it out. The, the year before that, DreamCube was the winner of the Upstart competition, and they made um, a UI remote that it's like a universal remote that works with um, iPhone and iPod Touch, and they're actually working with Apple on developing the hardware for that, so that was amazing too. And um, Cognovision, um, they didn't place first in our Upstart competition, and um, we, we uh, might have made a mistake on that one because they are a fantastic company. Um, they were second in 2008, um, so if they were a People's Choice Award, they might have won. Um, Intel and Microsoft are working with them they're using Cognivision's technology. It's really hard to explain, but basically they, um, they make digital signage that can kind of read what you're, who you are and what you're doing, and it'll change it. So it's almost like changing the ad to the age of the person. It's really cool. So Intel and Microsoft are working with them to create um, um, stuff that, it, that the screen content changes in real time. Um, I want to talk a little bit about online resources. So on to, we, um, Tony mentioned some of the events that we have. We have lots of educational events, but we also actually have a lot of education online. We have something called the Entrepreneur's Toolkit. It contains um, almost 500 articles um, that are relevant to entrepreneurs, and they're all short because we know you don't have a lot of time. So it's meant to be a toolkit like, a, I've got a problem, I need like a, a template for a job description or a template for a business plan. So you. You can sort of have a problem in your mind and go in and grab something out of that. Um, the, um, the link is here. Um, we are redesigning it so it'll be easier to search, but it contains articles, workbooks, and videos. And the workbooks are things that take you through a process. So making a marketing communications plan, um, making a, a plan for planning your investor strategy, doing your business plan. So it's meant to sort of guide you through um, more complicated things. They're really fantastic resources. I've not seen them anywhere else in the world. We're like the only ones that create, have created these resources to guide entrepreneurs through things. They're meant to save you time, basically. Um, 
and we hope um, and feedback is always welcome on what you what you'd like better more of and uh, how things are working we also have entrepreneurship 101 is also online so each lecture has a page and as well as this video the video of the events and the slides being available on that page we have some additional resources. They tend to be some articles that are related that are drawn from the Entrepreneur's Toolkit. We also might have a workbook that, you know, how to hire a uh, workbook would be with the recruiting lecture, something like that. And we've also added case studies. So case studies are just like, um, usually big company, when they were growing stories of what went wrong or, or how they handled something poorly and sort of the lessons to learn. So kind of just a story of um, things to avoid. And we're almost, we're a couple slides from the end. A little bit about communications. Um, as Tony mentioned, we send out an email every week to those who have registered online. It will contain a link to the video and the slides um, and have information about the upcoming session. Um, the lecture order and speakers may change as we try to fit in great speakers and their schedules. So um, please check the marsdd.com slash 101 website for the latest schedule. We have a Facebook group. I don't know anybody who doesn't nowadays. And there is an, a weekly Entrepreneurship 101 blog. So after, um, I think it comes out on Mondays every week. And we wanted to try something different this year with the blogs. In the past, Tony has written the blog, I've written the blog, Allison has written the blog, um, or the speaker has written the blog. But we wanted to see, we wanted to hear stories from the participants and the entrepreneurs that we have in the audience. So if we have anybody here who, who loves to write or wants to talk about you know, their challenges as they grow a business, obviously it might be a business that you're not um, too worried about sharing your sort of secret sauce, or you could keep that secret and just talk about um, your learning or your growth as an entrepreneur in sort of more general terms. We'd like to actually hear from from the participants. So if you're interested, um, it doesn't have to be every week. It can just be a couple blogs, but we'd really like to add your voice to our blog. Um, this is so slow. OK, and um, just a little bit about what's coming up. I mentioned the next week's um, uh, presentation is Different Types of Entrepreneurship with Tony Redpath and Alison Hewitt. Um, we have the following week is a lived it lecture with Mike McDermott from FreshBooks, who's a really engaging speaker. You'll really enjoy him. Very down to earth, and uh, he just makes you think that you can you can do this. Like it doesn't seem scary at all when you hear his story, and he's he's really successful. Um, the following week is basic nuts and bolts of building a business, also again with Tony, and then uh, and then after that, m most of the speakers will be changing every week. Uh, we try to get people that have worked with startups, know the space, um, or are entrepreneurs themselves themselves. And just an event that of interest that's not Entrepreneurship 101, but it might be of interest to sort of um, the more the scientists and, and engineers in the room, or those with technology businesses. Um, best practices at Mars is sort of our intermediate series. Entrepreneurship 101 covers um, sort of scans all the fundamentals of building a business, and and best practices goes a little bit deeper. We have um, it's a workshop on how to draft a patent with Ogilvy Renault. They have I think there's quite a number of lawyers coming, probably. 10 or 12. Um, it's very limited in participation, probably about 70, because it's going to be in round tables, and they will really help you hands-on um, how to draft a patent. So it's a, it's every year it's a really hot um, ticket because it's, I mean, patent lawyers are, are not cheap. So this is a really great opportunity to sort of understand how you would work with a patent lawyer. What do they do? What do you do? When do you, what stage do you get there? And what does it look like, the, the stages of getting a patent? So the registration for that, uh, should be online maybe next week um, on the Mars events, the Mars site on the events section. And that's it. So um, I know it was a lot of information to take in for the first time. Um, there will be way more exciting speakers than me um, following uh, this session. So I, I really, really hope to see you. Um, after each session, I forgot to say, the speakers do stay. We do try to cut it off at 6.30. It's really hard sometimes because people come in late and then we start late. But we try to cut it off at 6.30 and have the speakers stay for questions so there'll be lots of engagement. Um, Tony and I will stay. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, you can come up to the mic or you can and grab us after and uh, we're happy to answer your questions. You're good? Okay, thanks very much. We'll see you next week.